Monday. It is the 19th of October, 2015. <laughs> I'm Wayne Alley. And I'm Kate Daniels. And good morning there. I uh, hope you're doing well on this brand new day, brand new week, and there you go. How there you doing? There you go. I'm good. I, I can't keep a straight face when you say what month it is. Uh, uh, October. October. I can't. I can't. Well, it's the month after September. Yeah. <laughs> And what? it's Monday again, and we are coming towards the close Woo! of another month. We are. Can you believe that? I can't. I can't. I mean, yeah. The 19th already. We're in the latter half of October. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. And let's see. Well, speaking of the, the calendarial things, today is Evaluate Your Life Day. Now, that's pretty oh, serious. Oh, that's pretty deep. Yeah, it's very it's deep. pretty yeah. neat for a Monday. It is very deep. And that's the only thing that, that is on the list for today. So it's a big to-do Give that some thought. Yeah, it is a big to-do huh. All right, around the Wayne County area, oh boy, we have had some great fall weather and the leaves mm -hmm. are going to be changing pretty soon mm -hmm. and wow. So if you have a camera, get out and take some pictures. Yeah. I know I will. I, it, this is the best time of year, it seems like. Now, it when is. it comes around spring, I'm going to say this is the best time of year. <laughs> but this is, it's the best. Well, I do too. I say that too. Okay, coming up this weekend, this Saturday, is Operation Medicine Drop. That's going to be this Saturday. Uh, and here's what it's all about. Now, the question is asked, what do you do with those old pills that collect in your medicine cabinet or in the kitchen? You know, they're not really safe. They're not. Some people keep them in case they need the medicine down the road, while others flush them down the toilet. And that's not a good idea either. These solutions may have worked well in the past, but not in today's world. Operation Medicine Drop will collect outdated, unwanted, and unneeded pills. Also, prescription or over-the-counter pills from your household. Now not only prescription but over the counter sure. old aspirin old pills of any kind sponsored by the 4-H prevention program the Wayne County Sheriff's Office the Wayne Connections Substance Abuse Prevention Task Force pills will be collected this Saturday from 11 a.m. until 2 p.m. in front of Berkeley Mall in front of the mall all you have to do is drive through and they'll take them pills should, re should remain in the original bottle or container to enable the types of pills to be tracked no names will be used. Bottles will be destroyed in the pills, uh, with the pills in the incinerator. A black permanent marker will be available to mark through personal information. In recent years, the U.S. Geological Society scientists have discovered various kinds of medicines in the water supply being flushed down the toilet. Yeah. Can you believe that? Just imagine millions of pills of all kinds of quantity and quality going down the toilet and when that happens they of course they dissolve and that could create a problem sure. with the water supply antibiotics birth control pills cancer treatments and all that most wastewater treatment facilities are not able to remove these substances from the water supply so we want to keep it out of the water supply that's coming up this saturday this saturday at berkeley mall just drive through drop the information drop well they want some information but they do not want your name or anything like that they just want the pills in the bottles in which they came Drop it off and be done with it. That's it. Very good. That's it. Being responsible. All right. You have uh, what you got going on? There's a lot going on. We just got <laughs> off of a great weekend with Dancing Stars of Wayne County. Oh, yes. Congratulations and, um, to everyone there. Yes, yes. So you'll hear more about that. Um, and, you know, we're just, we're real thankful for the many participants. I'll tell you, I did um, last week when we were preparing for it, I wanted to see how many stars we've had over the last five years. That we have had to participate. Yeah, there have been 96 stars. Really? Is that not wild? That the first is. year in 2011, we had 26 stars. 2012, we had 25 stars. Well, after the first two years, we went. It was probably a touch too long, so we scaled back. 2013, we had 15. 2014, we had 14 stars, and this year we had 16 stars. Mm -hmm. 96 community members that is have, have participated. So we're just real thankful for all the stars and the sponsors. And um, over the next 12 months, you're going to hear great reports of, of what we're doing with those funds here in Wayne County. Wonderful. So it was a great weekend. And on the heels of that, we've got our Leading Wayne Leadership Luncheon, which we talked about last Ooh, week. And yeah. um, we've got Mr. Scott Stevens, uh, City of Goldsboro Manager, uh, Mrs. Shelby Benton, Benton Law, and she is also the first female um, president of the North Carolina Bar Association. Um, Dr. Michael Dunsmore, Wayne County Public School Superintendent, and Colonel Joseph Slavic with Seymour Johnson Air Force Base, Base Fourth Mission Support Group. 
That is coming up on Thursday, October 22nd. You are not going to want to miss it. I can't wait to be there. I know, and you are going to be there. Yes. He's going to be there. And so if you cannot physically be there, he's going to be there filming it, and he's going to air it for you all to enjoy. It'll be a w about a week after the, the, the program, but uh, I would strongly encourage you to go, be there, and it just, it's just so much better to actually be in person and hear this. It is. This is these are str four strong individuals, four great people here in our own community that you will not want to miss. Sharing lessons learned yes. in leadership. So yes. we thank you for offering to come. For those of you watching that cannot come for whatever reason, um, we appreciate Wayne bringing it to you in the comfort of your own home. That's right. Please wear clothes. <laughs> so in your comfort of your own home, <laughs> wear something. I mean, I don't want to, you know, walk around like that. But anyway. <laughs> a public art installation recognition ceremony will be held. Hope you enjoyed it. It, it was, was this amazing. past weekend. I was yeah, about to tell you, it was really time. good. Yeah, it was really good. But go out, go see uh, it, downtown yeah. Goldsboro. <laughs> You'll see the um, art displays he's talking about. They're pretty remarkable. Um, and certainly statement pieces uh, in the city of Goldsboro. Well, I haven't been there yet. I haven't seen it, and that's why I was It's okay. I'm, well, it's okay. I will see it, though. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, and we've got more stuff. But we, we need to go to our next segment right now, and we'll be back with more in a moment. Thank you. Today we're wanting to talk about the Chili Challenge and what in the world is the Chili Challenge? We're here to tell us all about it. There's Rosalind Lomax and Kitty Saul's here with us today. How are you doing, ladies? Just fine. Great. Hope the, you are. I'm doing great. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having now, us. Now, Rosalind, you were here a while back to tell us about the uh, Chili Challenge. Uh, once again, in case anybody missed that, what is the Chili Challenge? Well, the really Chili Challenge, and this is the ninth one, is the only fundraising event that the community soup kitchen holds each year. It's the only event. Now we do have many wonderful donors mm -hmm. and sponsors and people who take care of our needs and we have the support of the whole community. But this, and we also go to Sam's Club for solicitations twice a year and people are very good to us there. But this is our only event and it is yeah. fun. It is fun, it is a big fundraiser and everybody wins with this. Everybody wins. Everybody wins. The soup kitchen, the people who take part in, in the cooking event, the people who take part in participating in the, the eating of yeah, the chili. Absolutely. Ooh, it's, it's great. All right, now put us, put us in the middle of all this, if you will, and tell us what we expect to see when we get to the Chili Challenge October 24th. October 24th uh, at 7 o'clock we'll be there setting up and a wonderful group of young magicians will be helping us. <laughs> this is the Seymour Johnson Air Force Base leadership team, yes. Airmen's leadership team, and they helped us last year set up and strike the set afterwards and right. they are just magic. So what? we really appreciate that support from the base. I tell you, those folks out there at Seymour Johnson Air Force Base, they never asked for credit, they never That's said, right. hey, tell everybody we were here, they never say that. They just come and get the job done. Done, Absolutely. And then they then they move on. I think we're gonna the next feed event. them a little bit this year. Yeah, you got to <laughs> feed them. Yeah. They have all the well, these are growing people. I mean, they're young and they're growing. <laughs> right. you know. They are wonderful. They're wonderful. So they'll yes. be there very early in the morning. Teams can enter uh, the area, which is the John Street parking lot mm -hmm. uh, between Flying Shamrock and Center Street. Right. Teams can enter at eight o'clock, and they have until nine o'clock to empty their vehicles and get all their cooking stations mm -hmm. set up and decorate their booths, and then they have to remove their vehicles. We have 20 teams so far this year, and our deadline wow. is the 19th. So there may be a few other teams. We may have a big turnout this year of cooks. The deadline is so, Monday the 19th of October. Yes, it is. Okay. Yes, it is. And they can enter still. It's a $75 fee, and they can enter by calling the community soup kitchen. That phone number is on the poster, and okay. it is 919 731 Three nine three nine, and it's listed in the phone book as Community Soup Kitchen. So okay. they can call and get the paperwork done and be added to our list of teams. There's great. 
<laughs> competition. It's all in good good fun. But it is. it's wonderful competition. Uh, many teams have been participating the whole time this event has been going on, and they are really becoming very very interested in adding to their collection of prize bowls. Uh, local potter Randy yes. Wright has made a beautiful collection. We want to see this right here. Go yes. ahead. All right, tell us about this bowl here. This bowl uh, is the one that my church, First Presbyterian Church, yes. won for its chili last year, uh -huh, second uh -huh. place prize. Uh -huh. And Randy Wright designs a new set of bowls each year. Uh, one year recently, there was a beautiful red glazed interior. Another year, a bright blue glazed interior. But he um, includes the prize that's being won and the date of the really chilly challenge and mm -hmm. there are five prizes so he gives us five beautiful new designs every year new creations of a new design and uh, the prizes go to the first second and third place chili taste right. and there's a group of 15 judges who determine the winner. It's blind tasting. They have no idea whose chili they're tasting. Right. So everything's fair. Right. Uh, and those three winners uh, get a beautiful bowl like that one. Mm -hmm. And the People's Choice Award mm -hmm. is also an award for good chili, the favorite chili, but it's also a little bit of a popularity contest. You and think? it goes <laughs> to the team that collects the most money for the community soup kitchen. So everyone who collects the most money wins a People's Absolutely, Choice Award. Absolutely, the People's Choice, and that's really what this is all about, collecting money to help the soup kitchen keep going. This is a major food and cooking event. Mm -hmm. And, Absolutely. And the money raised goes to the soup kitchen. 100%. 100%. They don't keep Absolutely. any money for anything. Yeah. There's no administration yeah. fees or licenses to pay or anything like that. Yeah. All of it goes to the soup kitchen. 100%. And um, we have sponsors that help us with the chili challenge, mm -hmm. that help um, cover the cost. And usually they're um, generous enough that it covers more than the cost. So that that goes into the pot to the soup kitchen too. Now, Kitty, you're a member uh, of, of, you were a member of the board. That's now right. you're a friend of the community friend soup kitchen. What does that mean? That just means that I, I, I did serve on the board. Mm -hmm. I did do help with the chili challenge and the other um, mm -hmm. events. And now I've cycled off the board, but they still find my telephone number. So <laughs> <laughs> we don't forget our number. Right, so I funny. still get called from time to time to come okay. and help. And we, we do need all the help we can get. But, right. but helping and donating does not always um, cover all the costs at Soup Kitchen. Mm -hmm. There's insurance and uh, equipment repair and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we do have to raise cash to help meet the needs. Tell me about the Soup Kitchen. Where, where is it? And who do you serve, it's, or who do they serve? Who do they serve? But, um, it's located on the corner of Oak and James Street. Mm -hmm. um, it's been there for quite a few years. It moved from St. Stephen's Episcopal Church, which was on James and Mulberry, um, down to the it, to its place where it's just the soup kitchen there. The building this, it's that used to be the Jewish temple. The Jewish temple, sure, right. the Bethel and, Temple. And they've allowed us to use the building just for the sole purpose of the soup kitchen. That's wonderful. And um, and they open the doors. They do not discriminate against anybody that's hungry. And unfortunately, not only do we have adults, but we have children coming in to the I've soup kitchen. I've seen that. The, the need is definitely great there. Um, last year they uh, served over 44,000 um, meals. This year they're already up to 33,000, so I'm sure they're going to surpass last year's. Um, They've already number. served 33,000 this year. That's right. And these are, now if you, let me just make a point here. Uh -huh. You may live in a neighborhood where you see families coming and going all the time, but you never really, really know what that family any family may be going through. They may appear to be, everything may appear to be okay, but they, and at some point in time, may have fallen on hard times. And many people will not say, hey, I'm having a tough time here. They'll just go about their business. And many of these people come to the soup kitchen. That's right, that's right. Families, that's entire right. families come to the soup Originally, kitchen. Originally, it was designed for the homeless that, you know, that was noticed mm -hmm. um, downtown area mm -hmm. um, at that time, way back at that time in 1980. But um, it's become more than that now. Yeah. And, um, like I say, the numbers, I mean, it's not unusual to hit a 200 meal day. And I'm sure, you know, for some organizations that may not sound a lot, but when you think of that's 200 people that are hungry that um, otherwise wouldn't eat that day, mm -hmm. you know, it's that's heart right. rendering. It, it is. Really is. So, Rosalind, we have our chili challenge. It starts the morning of the 24th at 7 o'clock. The, the gates open at 8 for the cookers. The public 
comes in at nine o'clock and they start. At eleven. That's what I meant to say. At eleven I meant to say eleven o'clock. <laughs> 11 to 2, the public can be there. There'll be entertainment. The Downtown Chameleons, a band, will be playing all day. Is that and, all day? And a DJ, Up Next Entertainment. Okay. So that will be nice noise all day long, That's good kind wonderful. of noise. Uh, some little face painters from the youth group at Frost Presbyterian Church okay. will be there. We're trying to add a little entertainment for the younger set because we do have many children who come to the Chili Challenge, just as we have many children who come to the Soup Kitchen. Yeah. And I'd like to say, uh, to add to what you and Kitty said about the people who come, one concept I love is that no questions are asked. If someone comes and and gets in line, mm -hmm. that person receives a meal. They're fed, and, and regardless. And there are many That's people right. who come back years later, some of the best donors of bags of groceries or a few paper supplies that the soup kitchen needs on a daily basis, people will come back to the door and, and won't even identify themselves, but will say, my family ate here years ago and I want to bring something to give now. So those are the rewarding moments, and along with those moments at Sam's when little families will make sure mm -hmm. each child has a dollar to put in or a quarter to put into our jars when we collect money there. So it's a heartwarming thing. But the Chili Challenge is just fun. That just is fun. fun. And this is the ninth year. Yes. That's amazing. Really and it grows, challenge. it gets, gets bigger every year. We it had does. a thousand last year. A thousand people came down. Really? Beautiful day. Beautiful day. Oh my best, goodness. Best year ever. Last I don't think year. it's But we're going to do better this year, right? It's rained once since I've been helping all these seven wow. years. Wow. So. Wow. So a thousand people last year. We want to do better than that this, this year. What does a bowl of chili cost? A, 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 or what does a ticket cost? Five dollars. We have tickets available at the gate and everybody on the board and some businesses are selling them. They're available, but they are also available at the gate. And the five dollar ticket will allow you to go to Taste 20 chilies more than once if it yeah. lasts. Really? That long. Graze so, all day. Uh, you can graze all day. Get a good lunch. Graze all day. Good I graze very good well. <laughs> you know? Five and under eat free. So we Children see five and under. people in strollers going through with their families I and they bet. taste some of the hot chili and some of the sweet chili. And the competition is, is good, as I said, for the bowls and, and for the another uh, prize that I did not mention is the best booth. Some of the cooking teams go all out with their decorations and oh, their yeah. costumes, and yeah. uh, there is a team of three judges who choose the best book, the one more in keeping with its theme or most in keeping and with the idea of the fall season and the chili challenge. And we have some pictures from last year's. This, these are last year's uh, mm -hmm. chili challenge? Mm -hmm. We have some pictures of last year's chili challenge. We're going to be looking at uh, We're looking at them now. I put them up on the screen, and uh, I see a lot of happy people here my goodness it's it's a good day yeah. a good time it's yeah. a good family day too it is a good mm -hmm. family day and this Definitely. is october 24th is a saturday is that right yes all right, all right. yes this all is right. wayne county at its best listen this is one of the Doing finest important. places to live because it's family oriented this is a very generous community it is. Uh, wayne county is the best it, it, is. Is. it, is. it is anytime you know i have discovered in the years that i've been doing this any disaster that befalls this yes. area people just rush to help right. regardless regardless of who is in need people in this community will rush to help them That's absolutely and this is what we're incredible. asking you to do it is incredible yes. we're asking you to come to the to the uh, to the parking lot between center street and john street right about there <laughs> yes yes on the 24th that's a saturday and get there at 11 o'clock sharp and spend your five dollars and uh, you know what if somebody wanted to pay six or seven dollars for a ticket that be okay that, yeah we'll take it thought it would <laughs> thought it would any amount same with sponsors we'll accept any right, amount right. of sponsorship and it's not too late to be a sponsor right. you could be a sponsor that same right. now, how does somebody uh, become a sponsor what well, do they do they can call the soup kitchen or they can also go on, on our website mm -hmm. and get one. the information the, the uh, really chili challenge dot org website actually community it's under community soup, soup, soup kitchen, kitchen. Well, that's what I was a little say. glitch yeah, in the link, so yeah. it's quicker to call the soup kitchen and get that paperwork mailed right to you okay. or handle it over the what phone. what is that uh, you know the phone number of the soup kitchen uh, seven three one yes three nine three nine you got your notes there yes <laughs> yeah. all right seven three one Three nine three nine. Thirty nine thirty nine. Will Dorisha answer? Our age, right. Dorisha yes. will answer. Yes, and I am. she will mail yes. something or take the information over the phone All immediately. Right. Our age. Seven three one thirty nine thirty nine. Thirty nine thirty nine. 
Oh, <laughs> absolutely. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. All right, Kitty, thank you so oh, much for being you. here. thank you. What else? Did, did, it, did we leave anything out? Do we need to add something? I think we're good. Um, uh, the we only thing I would mention yeah. is that on December 15th, it will be our 35th anniversary for the soup kitchen. We you are kidding. We December 15th, 35 uh, years. 1980. And the yeah. number of meals served The number of meals, at, um, yes. so far, we, we don't know exactly how many we'll serve then, but so far we've so, uh, served 941,494 meals. So we're getting close to a million. Since that first day at St. Stephen's, a pot of soup and one ham. Uh -huh. uh, and they fed three people. Yeah, small, small group of people. It's that Brian first day in 1980. 940 some thousand meals have been served serves. since 1980. We're real close. In fact, within the next two years, we'll hit well, a million. We should. Easily. Oh, yeah. Easily. We, hope, we wish we wouldn't, but. No, yeah. this is something you don't want to do. Right, but but you, it's inevitable. That's right. <clears throat> as time goes by. Right. Rosalind, thank you. Kitty, thank you so yeah, much for being you. with us. Thank October 24th. Uh, there at uh, Center and John Streets, uh, regardless of what the number of the street is, don't worry about that. You will find <laughs> it. It's where all the people are, and it, and it, and it really smells good. That's right. right. True. Okay. Very true. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Today we're talking with Sergeant Paige Leonard of Crime Stoppers, Gold for Wayne Crime Stoppers, and I hope you're doing well. I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. Very good. We uh, are asking the public's help uh, in the uh, getting information to Crime Stoppers about a crime that's been committed here recently in Goldsboro. Yeah. What's going on? Well, on October 13th, mm -hmm. the Goldsboro Police Department responded to hearing some shots fired and immediately went to the area of 300 block of West Bruce Street here in town. Mm -hmm. They discovered uh, at that time already there was a 32-year-old victim by the name of Abdullah Whitaker mm -hmm. uh, had been shot and uh, unfortunately when they arrived he was already deceased. Mm -hmm. So we are definitely asking for the public's help. This was, you know, midnight time frame on a Tuesday night and, and many times I say when I come and do these Goldsboro uh, is awake at midnight and so we feel like there was people out in the area that may have seen something, heard something, uh, anything, any little piece of the puzzle will help. Now the 300 block of Spruce Street is not far off South William. That's correct. Off South William Street so at that time of the night, midnight, even if you're lying in bed watching TV, you may have heard something. Right, right. So if you heard something and you got up and you peeked out the window, or if you're out in the yard feeding the dog or whatever, mm -hmm. there's a chance that somebody saw something. That's right. Regardless yeah. of how small mm -hmm. they might think that information right. is. Right. You know, it, it, a lot of times those little pieces of the puzzle are what helped us. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I received a call just coming in to the studio in reference to this incident. And, and they started the phone call right off with, I'm, I'm sure you already know this, but, and, and in fact, it was a new piece of information. There you go. And so uh, a lot of times I had to tell people that. You might think we know every piece of the puzzle. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't, uh, but we want to hear it. You want to hear it, yeah, regardless hear of it. what you think, right. they may not have that bit of information. And right. that may be the, the little bit of information that closes the case, it right. puts it together. Right. Now, if, if that is the case, would a person be entitled to a, a reward? Well, as long as it's their information is what led us to make a felony arrest. Okay. Crime Stoppers in Wayne County pays for um, cases that are in Wayne County and on felonies. They don't pay on misdemeanors, but what I tell people a lot of times is sometimes they will provide information. It might start out as a misdemeanor, but it turns into a felony. Mm -hmm. Crime Stoppers will, the board will actually pay information. If sometimes we just recover a gun mm -hmm. or we just recover drugs and we're not able to make an arrest, a lot of times the board will um, discuss that and you know provide tip money on that also. Every case is a little bit different, but as long as it's a felony, we, we certainly do pay for that. And these are crimes committed in Wayne County? In Wayne County. In Wayne County. If there's a crime committed, say, in Rowan County mm -hmm. or in Allegheny County, right. then they may right. have a Crime Stoppers program there. Yeah, what happens a lot of times, I get a lot of calls for different counties. What I will do is, is, is one, find out do they have a Crime Stoppers program. Mm -hmm. If they do, I'll hook up with that coordinator. I'll get them in touch with, the, with each other so that they, they can provide the information to that county mm -hmm. and see if they're eligible for a board too. Okay, and uh, you see the number crawling across the bottom of the screen there. Crime Stoppers is 919-735-2255. 
And if you prefer to text, that's okay too. They just, they don't want to hear your voice necessarily. They don't want to know who you are. So the number to text is 919-222-4230. Sergeant Paige Leonard is your contact with Wayne, Goldsboro Wayne Crime Stoppers. And I thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. We're back on Wayne Goldsboro Television. Thank you for being with us. Today is Monday. Nothing we can do about walk, that. Walk, walk, walk. So there you go. Now, let's see what else I can talk about here. City of Goldsboro is inviting everyone to a ribbon cutting ceremony Monday, November 2nd. Yes. This will be in honor of the completion of Center Street. Yeah. Woo! Center Street uh, streetscape construction will be done. The ribbon cutting will be November 2nd, and I'm not sure about this, but it seems about the only thing left is to do the paving. That yeah, they've got just a little bit left. They, it is in literally the short rows. Oh, boy. And it's um, been a great uh, project. It's going to be wonderful for our community for many years to come. Mm. Um, and it stayed on schedule. Um, yeah. And the, the businesses in downtown Goldsboro, um, you know, we've certainly been trying to support and encourage people to come down even through this because as wonderful it is for us to celebrate that our community has this wonderful streetscape there have been many businesses that have that have been you know in the in the um, living through this and the heartburn that they've had to endure to because it was inconvenient for people to come so you know please patronize we talk about it all the time patronize local businesses um, don't go online if you can avoid it because downtown Goldsboro and all over our community we've got wonderful stores mm -hmm. um, who are locally owned who are working and um, and sometimes not in ideal situations and circumstances but they're they're keeping their doors open and it is going to be wonderful I cannot wait for it this to be done and we can all celebrate but do support local business year-round well I was down a while back and and it is just it's beautiful it is I mean they've got it benches for you to relax the landscaping is gorgeous yeah. The big fountain is going like crazy and bubbling and gurgling and all that. <laughs> well, I mean, what a fountain! I like that good. word. Yeah, you bubbling. like to gurgle. Yeah. <laughs> and there's and? a um, there's a spot catty corner to the Paramount where you can play chess. Yeah, I saw Have you that. Seen that. I saw that. I was so excited when I saw it on social media. I was like, "This is wonderful!" Oh, yeah. And then as soon as I hit send, I'm like, "I don't know how to play." <laughs> And I'm going to learn. You'll have to go down and learn. I'm going to learn yeah. in but, our community. The median is set up that it, you can actually go sit in benches on the, at the median and play chess or do whatever you want. Just w sit and yeah. watch people go by. Yeah. It's just, it's great. And it's just fantastic. I can't wait. November 2nd is when the ribbon cutting is. We'll tell you more about that the closer we get to it. I also want to mention that on November 1st is when you move your clocks back one hour. Oh, Daylight saving time ends. We go to standard time, Sunday, 2 a.m. Sunday. Yeah, you have to get up at 2 o'clock. You can't do it before 2. If you do, the clock police will come get you. I'm going to risk it. Okay, maybe not. All right, so anyway, before you go to bed that night, before you retire for the evening, mm -hmm. set your clocks back mm -hmm. one hour. Okay, so you go from whatever time it is now, back one hour, which means you get an extra hour of sleep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Well, let's see now. Okay, I'll talk about that later on. Oh, 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 ooh, 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 ooh. There used to be a program on television called Car 54. Where are you? That was, it was a comedy uh -huh. uh, in a police setting. Car, Car 54, come in. Car 54, where are you? You know, that's that kind of thing. And it was uh, Joe E. Ross, and it was uh, Herman Munster before he was Herman Munster. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was, I can't remember his name. Whew. Anyway, it was hilarious. Just a funny, funny, funny program. And Tootie, who was played by Joe E. Ross, was always saying, whenever he'd get an idea, he'd go, ooh, 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 ooh. okay. Ooh, hey, Francis. Anyway, that's what he would say. Uh, um, oh, birthday for today. Today's the 19th, okay? Uh -huh. John Lithgow, if you don't know the name, you'd certainly know him if you saw him. He's been in everything. He's done all kinds of 
movies, uh, TV, Broadway. He's done everything. Oh, wow. He plays good guys, funny guys, bad guys, and really a good bad guy. I mean, I mean, I saw a movie with him in, in a, in, as a bad guy in a helicopter, uh -huh. and he was fighting Rocky. Well, it wasn't Rocky. It was before he was Rocky. I mean, it was after he was Rocky. What's his name? I don't Stallone. know. Stallone. Yeah, he was fighting Stallone in a helicopter, and the helicopter, was, anyway, went off a cliff. Uh, but he is great. Jeannie C. Riley, mm -mm. she did Harper Valley PTA, the song, some years ago. John Lithgow is 70 today. Jeannie C. Riley is 70 today. Jennifer Holliday was on the TV show Allie McBeal. She played Jennifer. Oh, She's 55 one. today. Joy Bryant played on Parenthood. She's Jasmine. She's 39. Omar Gooding is Cuba Gooding's little baby brother. Oh. Yeah, that's Cuba's brother. Omar is having a birthday. He's 39 today. He was, he was on the TV show Family Tree. He played Anthony. Uh, Desmond Harrington was on the TV show Dexter, Gossip Girl, and Astronaut Wives Club. He's 39 today. And Jillian Jacobs is Britta on the TV show Community, which is a very funny program. Not seen it. Community? No. It's a very funny program. Hmm. Anyway. I wonder what people are thinking about this. <laughs> this is a very funny, funny. program. Now, we're going to mention to you that we're on again tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock. And if you miss any part of this program, and if you're not watching us at all right now, run and turn on your television <laughs> because I'm about to say goodbye. We'll be back tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock, and then the show repeats at noon, then again at 5.30 p.m. So until tomorrow, I'm Wayne Alley. And I'm Kate Daniels. And this is Wayne Goldsboro Television.